Is the only benefit of crab meal calcium? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Batwell and Dave Hansen on Perfect Garden Steve Lee. If you haven't checked out our monthly membership, I highly recommend to do so. For only $2.99, you get access to over 1,570 photos, 162 videos, 10 files, 15 audio files, 562 shared links, and 86 members willing and ready to assist you through your growing practice. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and remember to have a great grow. Make sure to hit the join button on the bottom of every video. All right, so Dave, I'm super happy. We, we are getting into another down-to-earth video. Will you please go ahead and share your screen, and let's go ahead and get into it. And remember, stay to the very end of this video, because before we ever have these presentations, we actually have an in-depth conversation with Adam from Down to Earth, and he really gets into the nitty-gritty of things that he can't say to public, we do. And we always like to share a couple clips at the very end on things that he does share with the community. So Dave, go ahead and just jump in, and let's get into it. Yep. Yep. So we're going to be getting into, as Mark stated, a uh, crab meal, which is coming in an MPK value of four, three, zero. I'm going to start it off with a quote from um, John Burroughs. A man takes root at his feet. And at best, he is no more than a potted plant in his house or carriage till he has established communication with the soil by the loving and magnetic touch of his souls to it. So becoming one with our soils. Diving into crab meal, what does it provide? Crab meal is a great source of magnesium and calcium. Um, it's also rich in nitrogen. Um, it improves aeration, drainage, and soil tilth. And, and I really want the viewers, as we start going into all these ingredients, we, we started off with bat guano. We have good nitrogen levels, uh, micronutrients. We kind of dove into uh, kelp meal, which is getting into our root systems with the auxins and also the micronutrients. And here with crab meal, we also have a good source of calcium, but I want people to start looking at their ingredients, not just as a food source, but also what is making up the total mass of that soil for drainage. So these pieces of shell, whether it's oyster shell, crab meal, uh, kelp, you know, the physical matter is going to help in drainage and uh, water retention as well. So not just looking at it as a food source, but also improving your your drainage as well. Promotes growth of, of chitin eating bacteria in the soil. So this goes back to products also like um, bat guano, where um, the chitin is found to deter root gnats, um, ants, and other, other things that we're trying to keep out of the garden. And this is another way. So also um, deterring the root eating nematodes. So good nematodes, bad nematodes. There's a few different varieties, some that are eat bacteria, some that are going to eat the physical roots and others that are are going to eat other things like root net eggs as well. Um, it can be considered a biopesticide. So just leading right into what we we're just discussing. It's, it's a natural way to potentially deter those bugs away from your soil. You have anything to add to that? Crab meal is different than other ones. And just remember, it is absolutely important to amend your soil with this, not really as a top dress. Um, that's where we're going to get its major benefits as, as well as being a biopesticide. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. And, and we have to always remember that and what we're adding, some of this stuff is going to take longer to break down. So if you have preparation up front, amending your soils, maybe, so to speak, what people call cooking them, you're going to have um, a better response um, with your plants. Um, moving forward, uh, crab meal is also shown to aid in simulating the plant's immune system. So, you know, is it the chitin that's helping doing that where it's making the plant think that it's being attacked and then amping up its different parts of its immune system? Also high in protein content, providing uh, the foundation building blocks for terpenes and cannabinoids. Application methods, as Mark stated, I feel as well too, that this is better to add into your compost or adding into your soil prior to you using it. Um, so you can enrich your compost with it, um, aiding in the soil diversity, breaking down the plant matter. So it's that whole domino effect as the engine gets going, more and more colonies of bacteria and microbes are going to be colonizing, furthering breaking down of your compost and availability of the calcium that we are seeking to get. 
compost teas, I would not recommend it. You could, I've heard of people doing it. Um, but once again, these shells, the calcium that we're trying to get is, is not easy to access via um, a compost teas like worm castings or maybe back guano or cal meal, which could have more readily available nutrients. Um, this takes longer to break down. If you did do it and you do find value, I recommend I'm taking you know, the, the remainder of the shells after you're brewing it and putting it and top dressing it. Top dressing, you can add it as a top dressing method. I've also seen people sprinkling it on top of the soil in lieu of the, the chitin that we're thinking um, that has been shown, the science has shown that for it to have. If you are doing this, gently work into the top layer of your soil. And then I'm just putting again, aids in water retention, keeping soil moist for longer. But we definitely recommend if you can amend it ahead of time, you're going to get more benefits probably than top dressing. So if you're seeing those calcium deficiencies and then you top dress with crab meal, you might not get those instant results, which will go into some alternatives for you guys that need a little bit uh, speeding up. Mark, you have anything? No, no, I think the, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Um, application amounts. Um, once again, you can find this stuff online for quick references, but here's the, the recommended from the manufacturer for vegetable gardens and flower beds, and then more pertaining for the indoor cultivars. Um, you're going to add one to two tablespoons per gallon of soil and mix thoroughly. And like we stated, if you can do it ahead of time, you're probably going to get a lot more benefits than just top dressing alone. Three weeks, guys. Just keep that in mind. Always three weeks. When you, whenever you're using a down to earth or dry amendments, you kind of always have to be aware that you want to be putting into your soil. And it really, a lot of these things, unless there's a high amount of water solubility, uh, which it, it still shortens it down. It's not, it's not at, as it takes as long, but it still takes a little bit of time, even even with the w more water soluble dry amendment products. Three weeks. And then it is before it becomes really bioavailable to your plant. So just, just have that in mind. If you, you always got a proper planning when using dry amendments in my biological living and living soil. Yeah. And, and, and as people get more comfortable with their ingredients, what's in their ingredients and, and how their plants and vegetables are going to react to it, they'll, they'll probably naturally get into more pre amendments and creating their own super soils. And once they start seeing those results, they're, they're really going to be great growers at that point. So ending or with our conclusions, it's a great way to improve your soil aeration and drainage. So as we get more into these different amendments, you're going to see how all these building blocks are going to help create that soil aeration, proper oxidization within the soils and those, those root zones, as well with drainage. A great source of calcium and magnesium food source for your microbes and bacteria, which is extremely important. And then it's, it's slow release. So we want to keep that in mind. All their alternatives from down to earth is their solution grade products, um, which we will be diving deep into. But I just, if you guys are currently going through a calcium deficiency and you're watching this video and we're just talking about a week, three weeks of being available and you're like, dang it, um, you can head over there for their soluble grades and try out their calcium 96 um, which is 96% calcium carbonate. And then they also have um, a solution grade gypsum that's uh, in a calcium sulfate form. And then it's also found to help uh, deter certain bugs. And that goes back to the, to the chitin as well. Um, do you want to dive into any of these solution grades or your opinions on them or? Well, kind of what we were talking about again, and kind of reiterating the same thing, guys, if you want to use living soil and get into this, you have to plan for your grow. You can't just be like, oh, I want to grow, you know, get into the season, grow by, uh, you know, and, and just rush through the process. You, you have to get your soil, amend your soil to really make it work. Because if you don't plan for it, you're going to start to run into issues and you're going to want to find solutions. And your next one, every single time you go further and further down the, the, this pathway to becoming more water soluble and instantly available, you're going from what your core values are. And every time you're compromising a little more and a little more and a little more until the point where you are just kind of using anything out there, which you're just at that point, you're the chemist and you've got to, uh, you got rid of all the, all the biology and, and you're, you're the chemist, if that makes sense. So just yeah. proper planning. If you're running into an issue with calcium, these two products are once again going to be a little more water soluble or a lot more water soluble and will be much more readily available. Next options beyond this could be a liquid bone meal. But when you start to get, once again, go into these other ones, you have to think about their processing techniques of how they extracted the bone meal and what type of acids were used during their processing. Yeah. And, and, and as, as people get more comfortable, as I'm stating, you're amending these soils ahead of time. 
you know, these, these solution grades, you'll probably find over time through your growth and growing experience, you'll probably use less and less of them. And, 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 and I'm confident in, 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 in the growers and in, in, in these organic products that you will get to those, those levels where you're like, man, I, it seemed like I was top dressing all the time. And now it's like, man, maybe you top dress going into flower and then you, you get your plants to harvest just fine. It's because of that upfront work, the knowledge of your products, what you're contributing to the soil and the soil biology and really optimizing and giving the plant the ability to be its best and express uh, all of these levels of oils, terpenes, and everything we're seeking will come through that upfront work. So yeah, very important. And then just our end, we want to thank everybody for continuing to support and watching us. Uh, love the feedback and the comments. And, and I see a lot of suggestions for other products and just asking to be patient. Um, we do physically like to work with these products before we recommend them. And uh, yeah, Mark. Yeah, guys. At the end of the day, remember to stay till the end because Adam's going to talk about a number of other reasons why calcium deficiencies could appear in your plants. And he's going to run through a different, a nice little dialogue on that. Once again, only on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. What was the question, Mark? The question was the same one I was digging at last night on our conversation. There's a uh, there's an amount you amend your soil with, mm -hmm. but then at during your grow you might run into a deficiency and you have to top feed. It does mm -hmm. the recommended dose change, and do we have to take into account water solubility of your product if we are top feeding, or it like should we instead of doing a top feed should we mix the first top feed into like a gallon of water? and get as much water solubility into the roots as possible, and then al allow the top dry amended to just fall onto the, the top of the soil because that's right. what has to be bioavailable later and for then, to avoid that, salt issues. And that's so big with people that are entering into organics or that are not familiar. They're always looking for, especially calcium, calcium and magnesium, but calcium always seems to be that if they run into a deficiency, I want it now type mentality. Calcium is uh, exceptionally challenging. Um, right. And so, yeah, so for crab meal, if you're top dressing with crab meal to fix a calcium deficiency, should you mix it into water? I don't think so. Uh, I think you I, should yeah. be using something else uh, ultimately because with the dry amendments, almost all of them, you need to be thinking two to three weeks ahead because they're just too slow. So even when there's a water soluble component, well, calcium, you know, calcium is simply not going to be water soluble <laughs> in, in any way that we really think of it that way. But nitrogen, yeah, you may squeeze a little bit of nitrogen out of that crab meal, but not enough to be worth your time doing that. Right. I think if you need, if you need nitrogen, you find a, a liquid or, you know, a soluble powder, like a high a soybean hydrolysate or a fish hydrolysate, because if you're correcting imbalances, two weeks is too long and you want to get it fast. So, you know, I, I like to think of the dry amendments as like a base feed as the diet of the plant for the long term. So you start with it and you may have a couple subsequent reapplications built into your program. But if you need to fix something or you really want to push something, then, you know, with the exception of maybe the guano or the blood meal, you really should be using a liquid. There's simply you know, you're talking about starting to work within a day instead of work, starting to work within a couple of weeks. And, you know, just like we don't want to live off of sugar necessarily or caffeine necessarily, if we get to the point where we are just dragging, it's a nice little boost. You know, it's a nice little fix for the way we're feeling, but it's not the meal. It's not the diet. And it ultimately isn't what, what powers it. So, I would say think of in those circumstances, so like for calcium, if you really need fast calcium, um, there are liquid calcium sources like calcium hydroxide, but they are generally recommended if you're doing like, you know, trying to do to OMRI levels, they're generally going to be recommended only for foliar applications. And I am pretty iffy on how well foliar, foliar applications work with calcium because calcium is a fixed nutrient. It doesn't move once it's in the plant. So you have to deliver it exactly where it's needed. And so some might get in there but it's not necessarily going to be translocated to where it needs to go. So if you're having a deficiency, uh, like a calcium deficiency in the fruiting, so something like blossom end rot, you have to get it where it's going. And sometimes that material doesn't sufficiently take the nitrogen up in a foliar fashion, like a, a fruit. You know, most of that beads off and goes away. 
So what you want is the finest calcium you can get into the soil. It's what we have here. Crab meal is definitely not on the list. The oyster shell is okay, but we offer uh, calcium 96, which is a ultra fine calcium carbonate, basically just a very, very finely ground limestone. And it's meant to go into liquid uh, suspension and be delivered to the plant that way. Uh, down uh, down to earth has that? I never heard yeah, of that one. Yeah, it's, one of, it's in our soluble powder line. Oh. So it's calcium 96. I'll send you guys uh, an email with uh, a link to the product. Again, crab meal, first of all, it's a relatively big chunk and which is nice for soil structure as it breaks down, but I wouldn't count on it for that calcium. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're prophylactically using oyster shell, which is really hard to get right now, in fact, it's impossible to get right now, then, you know, if you're working a week to two weeks ahead of time and you're able to guess that you're going to be deficient, then that might work. But again, the finer you go, the better. Uh, for a material like that. So kind of returning to the original question about the crab meal, if you are going to be top dressing it, I, I wouldn't p- put it in water. The Very little of that is going to be worth your time uh, and energy. You might squeeze something out of it, but I, I won't say you will. I'll say that yeah. there's a potential and it's a pain too, because it's, you know, you swirl it around and most of it's going to go right to the bottom of the container immediately upon you know, uh, end of agitation. Um, so you might as well just spread it on the soil, water it. And if any of that soil material is accessible, then it's going to be pulled down. If you do want to increase the speed of a material like that, if you know ahead of time that you're going to have trouble, you can mix it into something like compost, uh, something very biologically active. So here's something for like rock phosphate, a, a colloidal rock phosphate. You can, you know, that's a relatively slow and low source of phosphorus and calcium, but you can mix that into a compost ahead of time by a month or so, and then apply the compost to the soil. And you might see somewhat, well, you would see more rapid use of that, so long as it didn't get too brutalized by the rain and such leading up to it, you'd see a faster uptake. But again, you'd probably see still faster by something like an ultra-fine calcium carbonate or a liquid. Uh, basically, you know, in, in, in my practices and my observations as a whole, so not just with our medical plans, but with house plants and gardening and stuff like that, I noticed that there's different absorption rates depending on your media. And, and while most will say, well, that's pretty obvious, 